Okay, let's talk about one-sided limits. So one-sided limits are exactly how they sound. You're gonna come in from either the left or the right, but just one at a time. The limits that we've been looking at before this have been two-sided. It was a right and left together. So now we're gonna distinguish uh, from which side is which. So a limit from the left means that x approaches c from values smaller than c. Now the limit, if it's just one sided from the left, the notation looks almost exactly the same, it's just that it'll say x approaches c and it'll have a little minus sign up there. That is the only way to tell if it's a left limit from a right or from a two sided limit is this little exponent looking thing. It's not really an exponent, but that's the most convenient way to put it, or the convenient place. All right, so the limit from the other side, or the right side, means that x approaches c from values larger than c. So its notation still has the c there, but it's got that little plus sign uh, where the exponent goes. So most of the time, it's, it's not going to adjust like what we do to evaluate a one-sided limit versus a two-sided. So all those techniques that we looked at before in the previous sections would still apply to this. So your goal is to be able to plug in you know, what x is approaching. If you can't you know, try to manipulate the function, if it's not working, then you can go off of the graph and look at the graph. So like example A x is approaching zero well i can't plug in zero or manipulate it so instead let's just graph it so the graph of one over x looks like that it's the two curves and they're split so i just want where x is approaching from the right side so the right side would be over here this is the right this is the left. So I'm coming from the right. I'm not going towards the right. I'm coming from the right. So that means I'm starting out here and I'm working my way towards zero, but I'm still on the right side of it. So I'm tracing it. And as I get closer to zero, the graph just shoots up. Well, it's shooting off and up towards positive infinity. Now previously, you know, we said that if it's unbounded like this one, then the limit does not exist. Well, that infinity sign or symbol, it's still telling you, hey, this limit doesn't exist, but it's telling you why. It's because it's shooting off to infinity. So don't put D and E for these. If it's unbounded like this one, then you're gonna put in either infinity or negative infinity. Okay, part B, uh, same function, but now you're coming in from the left. So that's shooting down towards a negative infinity. It's a negative infinity. All right, part C, uh, plug in the one, and we can, and you get a zero. Part D, you can't plug in the two, so let's manipulate it. So I'm gonna factor the denominator. And then in the top, I'm gonna to factor out a negative one. So now your x minus twos cancel out. Now you can stick in the two and for x, you get negative one fourth. Okay, part E, huh, this one we can't really manipulate either. Uh, the absolute value of x minus three over x minus three, this does not simplify uh, because of the absolute value. Uh, we can't manipulate it either, so let's look at the graph. So the three is what I can't plug in. So let's look at numbers that are bigger than three because uh, some of you probably don't know what this looks like, and that's fine. Um, 
Well, if you plug in x equals 4, you would end up with 1 as your answer. If x is equal to 5, you'd end up with 1 again. If x is equal to 8, you get 1. If it was 10, you get 1. If it was 30, you'd get 1. If it was a 5,289, you'd get 1. So if it's bigger than 3, you get 1. Now let's talk about numbers that are smaller than 3. So like 0. Well, if you plugged in 0, you end up with negative 1. Plugged in negative 5, you get negative 1. So if it's smaller than 3, you get negative 1. So there's the graph of that. <clears throat> so as x approaches 3 from the left, from this side, as you get closer and closer to x equals 3, it looks like you're going to run into negative 1 for your answer. Now for f, it's the same function. We're just coming in from the right. So the right side, trace and trace and trace, and you get it close to x equals 3. Looks like you're going to run into y equals 1. So the limit was 1. Now g, there's no plus or minus sign up there, so now it's the two-sided limit. Well, the left side and the right side were not the same value. So the limit does not exist. So these last three, these illustrate the theorem that talks about the existence of a limit, uh, which basically says that um, in order for a limit to exist, the left limit and the right limit have to equal each other. If they're different, then the limit does not exist. <coughs> okay, so we've been looking at um, like continuity and stuff. So let's see why it's important. Continuity is used in a lot of theorems, including this next one, the intermediate value theorem. Uh, so b where a function is continuous um, matters for a lot of these definitions. So I'll stop there and then we'll look at this next theorem uh, and its consequences in the next video.